With Powerwall 3 mounted, the next step is to bring conduit and wiring into the unit. This video is for the international version of Powerwall 3 used in Europe, Asia, Africa, and Australia. Refer to the installation manual for country-specific details. Before beginning any wiring, ensure that both the enable switch and DC switch are turned off. Please note, the wire colors used in this video are not standard for all regions. Use the standard wire color scheme for the local region of installation. Wiring will connect Powerwall 3 to a breaker with a line conductor, a neutral conductor, and a grounding conductor. The breaker for Powerwall 3 is typically located in backup gateway, but can also be located in a load center that will be backed up by the system. Powerwall 3 is also connected to gateway with a four-wire communication cable. Installers may choose to run all of these conductors in an appropriately sized conduit or separately. Run conduit as needed to attach the conduit fittings to Powerwall 3's conduit entry knockouts. Any conduit entering the unit must use IP65 rated fittings. With the conduit run completed, take time to remove any dust or debris from the wiring terminals. All wiring terminations are made in the top section of Powerwall. AC wiring is landed on these terminals, labeled Line 1 and Neutral. Solar DC wiring is terminated here, on the terminals labeled Positive and Negative 1 through 3. Grounding conductors for both the AC and DC circuits are made on this ground bar. Low voltage connections, including communication wiring and Ethernet, are made on the Tesla ASIC controller, or TACO, located here. Since conduit can enter Powerwall 3 on either the left or right side, installers must utilize the built-in wire management clips when wiring must pass from one side to the other. Do not route any wiring in front of the Tesla ASIC controller or LED, as this will interfere with installing the front cover. Bring the AC wire into the enclosure with enough slack to reach the AC terminals while also providing a service loop. Use the terminal block as a guide for how much wire to strip from the end of each conductor. The AC terminal block has two rows that can accept the wiring. Either row can be used, but Tesla recommends using the front row for ease of install. To open the terminal, insert a cabinet-tipped flathead screwdriver into the rectangular hole and press firmly. With the terminal open, Insert the conductor into the adjacent round hole. Remove the screwdriver to close the terminal. Perform a tug test by lightly pulling upward on the conductor to ensure that it is properly seated and does not pull out of the terminal. If the conductor passes the tug test and remains in place, firmly press the conductor in again. If the wire pulls out of the terminal during the tug test, retry and ensure that the terminal is fully opened before inserting the wire. Continue this process with the other AC terminals. Retrieve one of the cable ties and an anchor from the Powerwall 3 accessory bag. Insert the anchor into the threaded hole by firmly pressing inward. Run the cable tie through the anchor and use it to secure the AC wiring. After securing with the cable tie, conductors should not extend beyond the sides of the enclosure as this will interfere with installing the front cover. For solar DC conductors, bring enough wire into the enclosure to reach the DC terminals, again providing a service loop. Strip the end of each wire and crimp on a fork connector. Please be diligent. Properly made crimps are required for all PV wiring. Watch the video on crimping forked terminals for a closer look at this procedure. Before terminating any DC conductors, ensure that the enable switch for Powerwall 3 is turned off. Beginning with positive and negative conductors for string 1, open each terminal, then insert the fork connector into its designated port. Tighten each terminal to the listed specification. Repeat these steps for circuit two and three. Powerwall 3 ships with multiple clamp-on ferrite cores, which must be installed around the AC and low voltage wiring within the unit. Refer to the installation manual for the exact locations of each core. With AC and DC connections completed, the next step is to connect Powerwall 3 to backup gateway. This is done with a four-conductor shielded communication cable with one twisted pair. Tesla recommends routing the communication wiring through the left side of the enclosure to ensure wires do not block the Tesla ASIC controller. Do not route loose wires through the front of the enclosure. Strip the communication wire jacket so that it does not extend past the wire management clip. This ensures that the individual conductors lie flat, leaving room for the front cover to be installed. Strip the insulation from the end of each conductor. 
Insert a cabinet tip screwdriver into the slots to open the terminals. Insert each conductor as far as possible into the terminal and remove the screwdriver from the slot to close the terminal. To terminate grounding conductors, begin by stripping the insulation from each conductor. Wrap the communication cable drain wire around one of the equipment grounding conductors and insert the two twisted wires into one of the equipment grounding terminals. Insert the conductor into the ground bar and use a T20 torque spit to tighten the lug to 4 newton meters. Proceed with terminating any remaining grounding conductors. To provide a hardwired internet connection to Powerwall 3, connect to the customer's internet router with a CAT5 or higher cable with an RJ45 connector. Powerwall 3 has two Ethernet ports. Either one can be used to connect to the customer's router. The second Ethernet port is used for installations with multiple Powerwall 3 units and will be covered in a separate video.